So um, as I uh, get us going here, we'll ask each other to introduce ourselves. Um, first, um, we assume that most of you have a graduating student um, here in just a couple months. Congratulations. This is definitely not something they did alone. Um, so a, a measure of that congratulations definitely goes to you as well. Um, so as you may have figured out, this is Mark Pontius, the person behind the screen who never has to talk in these webinars except for this one. Um, and so I love doing this one because I actually get to speak with you all as well. Um, and I'll ask the other folks in the room to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Amber Beal. I'm the Assistant Registrar for Certification Processes in the Office of the University Registrar. And I handle the commencement side of things in the Registrar Office. And hello, my name is Kathleen Schwantz, and I work in the President's Office. And one of the many events I plan during the year is our Spring Commencement Ceremony. <laughs> All right, so let's get moving. This is where we plan to go today. Um, so first we'll be talking about before commencement weekend, so the things that students must take before the weekend to make sure they're on track to graduate. Um, and then we'll talk about all the pieces related to the weekend itself, accommodations, the ceremonies, food, all of that. Following that, then we'll start talking a little bit about um, pieces after commencement weekend, like moving, helping your student move out of their housing, degree certification and mailing their diploma. Um, and then finally, we'll um, wrap up with a time for Q&A. However, if there are uh, questions that you have throughout, please make sure you use that chat function to answer them um, as they come up for you. But before we start getting into any of that, we're going to reference this website over and over again. Um, the commencement website is um, a wealth of information, um, and the um, URL, as you can see there on your screen, is just miamioh.edu slash commencement. So this is Amber again from the Office of the University Registrar, and we're going to shift into talking about important steps before commencement weekend. The commencement website has a tab that is completely dedicated to our degree candidates in order to help make sure that they are getting all of the important information they need from the moment that they apply to graduate through their, depart uh, their departure from Miami. The first step a student needs to take is, of course, to apply for graduation. They may do this by clicking on the link that we have on the main page to the commencement website, or they can do this by going into their BannerWeb account. After a student applies to graduate, the application is reviewed by the commencement area, and then we post that to their record. This is done within one to two business days, and a student will be able to see this reflected on their degree audit. They will not receive an email from us letting them know the application has been processed because at the end of the application itself, there is a link, or not a link, but a, a piece that tells them that their application has been accepted and that it will be applied to the record. The only time that we email a student is when we need to let them know that something is wrong with their application, such as they applied for a record that is not allowed, such as, you know, they're still showing as a pre-major or they're not actually in a degree program, things like that. Um, we also recommend that students take a look at their degree audit before they apply to graduate and again, once they have applied. And if anything is not clearing or showing as in progress, that they make an appointment with their advisor to discuss their record. After the application for graduation has been processed, students will need to complete the ceremony attendance form. This form is found under the Checklist for Graduation Candidates tab on the commencement website, and it's only for our degree candidates to complete. We do not need to know how many guests may be planning to attend. So we don't need the family members to complete it. We just need our students to complete it. And it's for them to tell us whether or not they plan to attend the graduation itself. The commencement office will send emails two to three times a week to our students that have not completed the form, reminding them that it needs to be completed. And the form actually serves two purposes. It gives the university an accurate count of how many students plan to attend the candidate or the graduation ceremony and it also provides my office 
with a mailing address for where to ship the diplomas. Students will need to also begin to think about their academic attire for commencement weekend once they have applied for graduation. And under the checklist tabs on the website, there is a page that is dedicated to the academic attire and it provides information for the bookstore about when they will be selling the attire as well as when GradFest will be. And we'll talk more about GradFest in just a few minutes. The checklist will give an overview of what to expect at the university ceremony on Saturday afternoon, as well as letting students know what time they need to be at the stadium. There is no practice ceremony for the graduation. It is important for students to look at the departure link to see what services may be available to them from Miami to help them with life after college. There is also information about how to order official transcripts and information about the photography company. We invite parents to review this information as well in case you'd like to quiz your children on anything. So, where will your student get their academic regalia, you might ask? GradFest is the answer. GradFest is the one-stop shop for graduates. At GradFest, students can get their cap, tassel, and gown and cords or sashes for academic distinctions like honors, order their graduation announcements, get their class ring, and a diploma frame. There will be discounts on the cap, tassel, and gown and on diploma frames during GradFest. I highly recommend that students make sure they know the title of their degree or their degrees before they attend the grad fest as the tassel colors or hood colors if they are graduating with a master's degree are based on the degree a student is getting. If a student comes in and says they are graduating with a Bachelor of Arts or a Master's of Science, the staff that is at the grad fest may, should be able to help them know what they are needing to get as their tassel color, but it's always better for them to know, the student to know what it is that they're graduating with because knowing just what their degree is may not be enough based on the type of degree they're getting as we do have a lot of different colors and some of those colors could be based off of the degree and the major that a student is graduating with. If your student cannot attend GradFest on the dates, which are April 2nd and 3rd in the Shriver Center, they first, they can go to the GradFest at our regional campuses in Hamilton or Middletown, um, or they can just go to the campus store in person. Students will also receive notifications about GradFest multiple ways. My office will be sending out information and emails on behalf of the campus store and the campus store is going to be advertising as well. All right, thanks, Amber. We're gonna move, uh, it's Mark again. We're gonna move on to pieces related to the weekend itself, so when the big celebration comes around. Um, first, we're gonna talk about um, where are you going to sleep this weekend? Um, always been a joy for you as throughout your student's time at Miami is just one of the easiest things to figure out is where you're gonna sleep in Oxford. Um, never a problem at all, as we know. Um, but uh, the university does offer on-campus uh, accommodations in our residence halls for Saturday night only. That's, again, Saturday night only. Um, and why only Saturday night, you might ask? Um, students living in the halls don't have to be out until Friday evening. Um, and then the university brings all hands on deck to clean and prepare rooms by noon on Saturday, um, which is when the check-in process starts. Uh, many people have find a hotel farther out for Friday night and or for Sunday night, um, and then they'll come on Saturday morning uh, or check out of the hotel on Saturday morning, bring their stuff to Oxford, um, when they can then check into their residence hall at noon. Um, this brings the, the big convenience of being in town after Saturday's events and before Sunday's events. Um, what all comes with the, the room, you might be asking, each re reservation is for a full residence hall room with two twin extra long beds um, and also includes linens, pillow, pillowcase, a light blanket, and towels. Um, so everything else is on you for that. Um, but check-in again is at noon on Saturday at Beachwoods Hall, which you can see pictured here. It's one of our newer residence halls on Western Campus. Some will stay at Beachwoods, but over two-thirds will stay in another residence hall. Um, and so you don't want to bring your luggage with you to check-in because you might not be staying there. Check-in remains open all night Saturday night. 
Um, so there isn't a cutoff time for that. So you don't have to worry about being there. Um, and there is uh, no early check-in because of that quick turnaround time um, from students moving out on Friday evening. There are accessible options if needed, um, and there's a place to note it in the reservation form, um, which you can access from the commencement website. No surprise there. We can't guarantee that all rooms in a party are going to be next to each other, um, but we can almost always um, place folks in the same building. Other pieces to remember, um, these are residence hall rooms, not five-star hotels. Um, we may think they're pretty great, and most times they are, but they are still residence hall rooms. Um, there's no TV, but there is an internet, of course, that you can log on to. Um, and um, we can't assign specific people to specific residence halls or to a hall where you might have a younger student living or the apartments on campus. Um, the university selects specific halls to focus on and then put staff in to clean um, after students move out before folks come for commencement weekend. So again, go to the um, commencement website for um, reservations. Another option is bringing a, um, uh, an RV to campus. There are spaces in our Dittmer lot, which is near our MUPD um, and the Equestrian Center, um, but those do not come, up with hook, come with hookups for power. Um, there's no charge to bring an RV, and you can arrive essentially any time on Friday and leave Sunday or, or Monday morning. Um, and there will be buses running um, during the weekend to get people to and from this parking lot um, and all around campus, and I'll go into that on the next slide. Otherwise, um, as you know by now, hotels are darn near impossible to get in Oxford any weekend, let alone this weekend. Um, my best piece of advice, as I've seen over my years of working here, um, is to book farther out and stay in the residence hall on Saturday night, or to book farther out and just keep checking. I'm always amazed at the number of people who end up canceling in a room in Oxford um, the weekend or two before commencement or family weekends. Um, and one tip that I've heard from lots of families is using a website that searches across multiple hotel websites like an Expedia or a Hotels.com so you can search for any openings um, in the area and hopefully you'll just get lucky. Um, additionally, there are many options for non-hotel accommodations um, that kind of continue to pop up throughout spring like an Airbnb, etc. All right, this is Kathy again, uh, Kathy Squance in the President's Office, and I'm going to talk to you about the university ceremony on Saturday, May 19th, 18th. My, I, I stand corrected, May 18th. My apologies. Um, as um, Mark was saying, watch the website. Um, keep your eye on the website for any last minute traffic issues. Um, there may be a detour or directional signs that will bring you to Jaeger due to construction where you rarely find out um, very far ahead if ODOT has planned anything for the surrounding area. So always keep an eye on the website for any updates you might see regarding traffic. The overall university ceremony on Saturday the 18th is at 1.30 at Jaeger Stadium. The ceremony should last approximately 90 minutes to two hours. Um, the stadium opens two hours beforehand, and the graduates will need to be on site by 12.30 p.m. Inside the stadium is open seats, and seats are not held, with the exception for accessibility and mobility needs uh, seating. The weather can be rather hot or can be pouring down rain. We've seen both, and seating inside the stadium is not covered. So we do recommend that you dress and prepare for the weather, bringing sunscreen if it's very hot, umbrellas. Uh, we do allow umbrellas, which is uh, something we've recently changed in the last couple of years, um, and um, bring ponchos, anything uh, that you can to uh, take care of uh, you and your guests during uh, the ceremony. Um, if the call is made for inclement weather, um, it will be the morning of the ceremony. The ceremony will only be canceled if there's dangerous weather likely, which means the threat of a lightning or a tornado. Um, that call will be made by the Miami University Police Department, and it, if the call is made, it will be to cancel the ceremony. And if, uh, if it is canceled, this news will be distributed by all means we have possible, including emergency text service, social media, et cetera, and it certainly it will be on the website, but we will also be uh, staying in contact with the students if, if the weather um, should uh, turn south on us. Um, concessions inside the stadium will be open for food uh, during the ceremony. 
Um, and also be prepared when you come to a Dagger Stadium for security. There will be bag checks um, at all the entrances to Jaeger Stadium, so whatever you don't need, please leave in your car. And there will be a list of prohibited and admissible items on our website. And again, umbrellas are allowed. Um, students should arrive to Jaeger Stadium carrying their cap and gown. Um, there will be accessible parking on Saturday. It will be in high demand, so we recommend that um, if you are going to need accessible parking, and even if you are not, if you are in town on Saturday um, and have the, uh, the time, do a quick drive-by of the Jaeger Stadium, see where the signs are, see where um, parking is, where um, accessible parking is, and just get yourself familiarized with the, the stadium where you'll be going. Uh, we will have golf cart transportation on that day from our various lots um, to uh, the stadium. And again, there will be lots of signs around Jaeger on Saturday and a lot of officers that will be able to assist you um, with getting to the stadium. If it's a nice day and you're able to walk, we would highly recommend it. Uh, you don't want to get in that traffic if you don't have to. Okay, now on to divisional ceremonies. So we have the um, the um, the ceremony on Saturday at 1.30 for all of our students. Um, and then we have the divisional ceremonies uh, for each academic division um, during the weekend. And you, as you can see on the slide, these ceremony, ceremonies take place in various indoor locations, all of which can be found on the commencement website. At these ceremonies, individual names are read and students walk across the stage. Additionally, there are other receptions and graduation ceremonies throughout the weekend, such as the reception for honors at 11 a.m. on Saturday. And I do want to point out we also have the President's reception on Sunday from 11.30 to 1.30. I stand corrected, it's 11 to 1 on, on Sunday. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, as for accessibility for these ceremonies, if you have a family member coming who uses a disabled placard, we recommend that you bring it um, to the ceremony. There are also a limited number of wheelchairs available at each venue for the various ceremonies. If you have a student with a disability that impacts the ceremony, make sure they are in touch with Student Disability Services so that their office can communicate with the divisions regarding um, your son or daughter's specific needs. Please do note that the dean for each academic division presides over the ceremony. President Crawford only attends the one on Saturday, but he does not attend the divisional ceremonies. Another note particularly related to the College of Arts and Science, this is a very large uh, division, um, and we recommend getting to the ceremony early, as Millette will uh, fill up pretty quickly. Finally, the commencement website lists the contacts for each ceremony and more information about each of the divisional ceremonies. All right, this is Mark again, and we're going to move on to um, parking and transportation. So we know where we're sleeping, we know the ceremonies we're going to attend, how are we going to get there? Um, to start off, every single parking lot on our campus will be open for public parking, um, with the exception of the Jaeger Stadium lot itself. Of course, um, as Kathy just um, talked about, permits will not be enforced um, starting earlier in that week um, to help facilitate students moving out of their residence halls, um, and permits on campus are not enforced through Tuesday morning when we start summer classes. Um, this still means that disabled spaces and fire lanes are enforced, um, but essentially any legal parking spot otherwise um, is up for grabs. Regular transit routes for the semester um, on their regular schedule run through 5 p.m. on Friday. Um, and on Saturday, at, um, uh, there, on Saturday during the day, there is shuttle service only um, and a kind of limited route uh, and loops related to um, commencement. Um, and so that's between different parking lots and um, Jaeger Stadium from that, like the Dittmer lot where the RV parking is. Um, and then there's also ADA accessible um, shuttle service during the time the overall shuttle service is operating. As Kathy mentioned, we do offer golf cart rides from accessible parking to the Jaeger Stadium ceremony, there, but there's not a general golf cart service available across campus for the entire weekend. 
And one really important note um, is that the City of Oxford does still enforce many of its parking regulations that weekend. Um, and the kind of line between campus and the city of Oxford is very fluid and, and almost invisible sometimes. So you can think you're still um, on campus parking, but you've moved into Oxford. Um, and so there's a link on the commencement website that takes you to the city of Oxford's parking website, so you can kind of see their enforcement. And finally, if there are any construction projects that will have impacts on the main routes to and from Oxford, as Kathy mentioned, um, again, this will be posted to the commencement website. On to what you're going to eat during the weekends. Um, first, University Catering does offer um, different um, to-go items and to-go kind of packages. Um, and you can see here that there are um, various increments. Um, if you want to host a, a party at your student's off-campus residence, um, as you can see, there's a, a grill option that includes hamburgers, hot dogs, coleslaw, etc. The barbecue option, which was the most popular last year, includes barbecue pork, grilled chicken, coleslaw, mac and cheese. The southwestern option um, has fajita chicken and beef, enchiladas, southwest layered salad, guacamole. Um, and then the sandwich option includes a garden turkey sandwich um, with herb cream cheese, spring greens and tomato, the classic dagwood with ham, turkey, cheese, lettuce, etc., and a hummus wrap with feta, sun-dried tomatoes, and cucumber. Um, and then all of these options include all the condiments, canned soft drinks, water, cookies, brownie, and all the brownies and all the catering goods. Um, and pickup and delivery is um, available. There are two larger meals here that you see on the screen hosted during commencement weekends: um, a Saturday evening buffet, 4 to 6 p.m. in the Markham Hotel, um, with a menu that includes carved flank steak, bistro chicken with lemon sauce, assorted rice and veggie sides, desserts etc. Um, and then there's also a Sunday brunch, um, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. also at the Markham with smoked salmon, um, country ham and biscuits, western scrambled eggs, bacon and potatoes, a waffle bar, fresh fruit, house breads, and, and more. Um, the pricing is the same for both of those, um, $35 for adults and then um, $16 for student, uh, children 8 and under. And information and registration for all three of these options um, can be found on the commencement website. And I've heard um, kind of related to the first one there about families who combine uh, with other families that their students live with to host a cookout or something like that during the weekend rather than trying to find a, a restaurant or somewhere in town. Um, this is where that delivery, delivering, uh, delivered catering might come in really handy. Um, and then there are limited dining centers open on campus as well if you're looking for um, food outside the larger celebration meals um, or just something smaller in general. Okay, it's Kathy again, um, and as I mentioned earlier, we will have a President's Reception on Sunday from 11 to 1 at the President's Home, Lewis Place. Lewis Place is located at 310 East High Street. All graduates and families are encouraged to join uh, President Dr. Crawford at Lewis Place for the annual President's Reception. Note that this occurs while some of the divisional ceremonies are still going on. And so um, some of the students come before their ceremony, some come after, and some have already had their divisional ceremony the day before. This is an informal event. Everyone in, in your family are welcome to join us. Um, it's kind of an open house st uh, style reception. No limits to your size or your group, or um, at any time between 11 and 1, everyone, students and families are welcome um, at the President's Home. And there'll be very light snacks and beverages provided. All right, so now the weekend is over, right? The cake is eaten, the gifts are open, everyone's cried a little bit, all the pictures are taken. Uh, what, let's start talking about some tips for after this wonderful weekend. So the first big one is moving out of Oxford. Uh, it is something that we hear from all class years of students that, or of, of families of all class years of students, that the student uh, has not prepared as much as they should have before you arrive to help them move out. Um, that is a very common occurrence. Um, but we know that the frenzy of move out comes as soon as um, everything happen, everything ends on graduation weekend. Um, so a few tips and requests. First, um, please encourage your students not to throw away good, still usable, used stuff. Um, I know you don't want to put, you know, that can of soup and that futon in the car to take it home, um, but someone else in our area can still benefit from it. 
um, which is why we have something called ShareFest Oxford each May. Um, and that is something that um, your students probably heard about in their earlier years on campus, living on campus, and um, as they moved off campus. It's a service and environmental nonprofit corporation dedicated to the collection and then redistribution of items donated by Miami University students and the Oxford community at the end of the academic year. Collected items benefit residents in need and, and local service agencies throughout the, the region. And then there's a good chance, again, that they heard about it previously. Students can make a pickup appointment right on the ShareFest website, which is sharefestoxford.com, and then volunteers will come and pick up the items literally as they are moving out. Um, so it is pretty seamless um, in our opinions. We also know that there are things that are in no condition to be donated and are truly trash, right? That half full bottle of ketchup, all of those things in their pantry that are half used. Um, the big tip for the trash is to bring lots of trash bags with you when you come um, and even collapsed boxes if you can. Um, I can't tell you the number of houses that um, we drive past on Monday or Tuesday um, after commencement that are uh, is just piles of trash um, because it you know folks didn't bring a lot of containers out there etc. So help them remember that there are people that live and work here throughout the summer um, and that they want to leave their own hometown looking like that as they left either. Um, but enough of the admonishments. Um, we're going to talk about on to learning when your students will actually get that really nice piece of paper that they've been working towards. Um, and I will turn it back over to Amber. Okay. So final grades are due at noon on the Tuesday after commencement weekend. So the degree awarding will not actually begin until around Thursday of that week due to the end of term processes that must happen in our office. Once the degree has been awarded, a student will not be able to access their degree audit any longer, and they will be able to see their degree awarded status on their official and unofficial transcripts. They will not be emailed when their degree is awarded. So students will need to make sure that they go in and they, need, they check that information if they want to see that their degree has been awarded. We do recommend, though, that students not order an official transcript until after they know their degree has been awarded if they need to have that information showing when they send that information on to a potential employer or keep that for their own records, things of that sort. Our diplomas, though, will be mailed four to six weeks after the conferral date to the address that the student provided the commencement office when they completed the ceremony attendance form. The reason why it takes four to six weeks is because of the amount of time it takes us to confer the degrees and to then have our vendor actually print up the degrees and then verify that the information is correct, package the diplomas, and then mail them out. If the mailing address needs to be changed from what, they, what the student gave us when they filled out the attendance form, they then need to email us at the email address that is all over our commencement website, which is commencement at miamioh.edu. And they need to email us as soon as they know their address needs to change. Once we send the information on to our vendor of the names of the degrees that need to be printed, we are no longer able to change the mailing addresses. That means that the diploma will be sent to the address we gave to the vendor and then we have to wait for that diploma to be sent back to our office before we can then send it to the correct address. And that means it takes longer for the diploma to get to the student. An email will also be sent to the student's Miami email address once their diploma is mailed, letting them to know it's actually on its way. So we do ask that students continue to check their Miami email account once they have left the university so that they can verify that they are, you know, getting their diploma and they know about the time frame of when it's being sent to them. For our international students or any student that is having their diploma mailed to an international address, my office will actually contact that student to verify the address and to make sure, so that way we can make sure that anything um, that we're sending to the student is going to the correct address and we are doing everything in our power to make sure the diploma is getting to the student in a timely manner. All right, so we have hit the end of our um, 
slides that we have present to you, and we've had several questions come in already, um, and so I will ask uh, a couple of them that are about divisional ceremonies and ask Kathy to answer those, and then we'll move through. But keep entering them um, into the um, chat feature so we can make sure we get them answered for you. Um, so two about divisional ceremonies. Um, the first is how long are divisional ceremonies? Um, and then the other is, um, can you talk about the differences between the Jaeger ceremony and the divisional ceremonies? Okay, this is Kathy again. So questions regarding which ceremony should I attend, and I get these questions every year. So the Jaeger ceremony is the only opportunity during the weekend that all of our administration will be present, our Board of Trustees members, um, the featured speaker for the ceremony, which has yet to be determined, and all of the rest of the students are together. So it's the, it's the one opportunity um, to be gathered as a class uh, for the final time for 2019 graduates. And then, um, and that one lasts, like I said, about 90 minutes um, to two hours, depending on um, um, a lot of factors. And do keep in mind, if the weather is uh, bad on the day of the ceremony, we do our best if we're still having it and it's raining outside, we do our best behind the scenes to cut the ceremony shorter. We've had to do that a number of times. Um, and the difference between the, the ceremonies, you know, at the divisional ceremonies, you are going to see, your students going to see the faculty and staff that they've come to know and love for four years here at Miami. They're going to, their dean is going to be, uh, obviously, the presiding over their ceremony. Each divisional ceremony will have a featured speaker, and they're working on those as we speak. Um, and your son or daughter's name is going to be called. Um, and so the divisional ceremonies, as much as I, I work with the divisionals on their ceremonies, I think both of the ceremonies are very important. But um, do keep in mind that the divisionals are uh, where your student's name will be read and have that uh, more, I would say, personal touch for your son or daughter. Um, so hopefully that gives you, and the, and the divisional ceremonies last Again, similar to the larger ceremony, 90 minutes to two hours. It just kind of de depends on their program. And like um, I think we referred to earlier, you can always click on the divisional um, uh, links and go to, and, and ask questions specifically to the divisions if you have any specifically for their ceremonies. Can I interject? Mm -hmm. um, something else to also add into that is that at the university ceremony, we do have the PhDs walk across the stage. That is this, that is their ceremony. So Very important our, point. Thank you. Angela. Our Doctor of Philosophy and our Doctor of Education students will walk across the stage at the university ceremony at 1:30 on Saturday. However, they are the only students that walk across the stage on Saturday afternoon. Our master's degree students and our undergraduate students walk across the stage at their divisional ceremonies. So if you want to walk across the stage and you are a master's degree student or you're an undergraduate, so therefore getting your associate degree or getting your bachelor degree, then you will want to attend your divisional ceremony so that you can walk across the stage and have your name read. So that's the, one of the biggest differences between mm -hmm. those two ceremonies. Our PhD students are only um, invited to go to the university ceremony because that is their ceremony. And to Amber's point, that was a great point to bring up about the PhD students at the larger ceremony. If the ceremony should be canceled due to inclement weather, the PhD students will be recognized inside of Millet Hall. And instructions will be provided um, on that day, but Millet will be set to, handle, um, to proceed with the PhD degree candidates. Um, but the undergraduates would all be dismissed, and then they would just go to the divisional ceremonies. Our ROTC students also will be at the university ceremony, and that is where they will be commissioned. So that is their ceremony for the commissioning as well. But our ROTC students are also invited to go to their divisional ceremonies later that day or on Sunday, depending on what their division is for their degree. All right, thank you. Several more questions, some of which I'll try to answer in rapid fire here. Um, and so, and some I'll have to ask um, our panelists here to answer for you. Um, the, so some quick ones. Um, 
where is Sunday brunch and is a reservation um, necessary? So I talked about meals earlier. The Sunday brunch is at Markham Hotel as well as the Saturday dinner. Um, and yes, you do sign up um, beforehand just to make life easier um, for everyone. Uh, is the ceremony broadcast live in any building on campus? Um, it is just online from anywhere that has internet um, on the front page of the commencement website. And that link will be available on the day of the ceremony. Yep. So there might be a placeholder as we get closer, and then it actually has changed over to the live link when we're really close. Um, where do the students give their email address or their mailing address again for mailing their diploma? That will be through the ceremony attendance form link. We have that listed on the front page to the commencement website. That is also listed under the checklist for our students. We also will be sending that information, the link through an email to our students directly. So they just need to be either going directly to the website or looking for the emails that will be coming to them. Uh, we will be starting those emails either today or tomorrow for our students. All right, some other quick ones. Um, so several questions about how long does a student's email address remain active at Miami? That is a lifetime thing. Um, for students, so they will always have that at miamioh.edu email address. Um, are tickets required for the divisional ceremonies? No, um, no tickets are required for any of the graduation ceremonies, but we definitely recommend that folks get there early um, because they do start to fill up as we get closer. Um, bad weather for students at the main commencement ceremony, what, how, do you, how do you recommend that they prepare? I think the thing I see most during that ceremony is the clear ponchos. Yes. Um, and to that point, we um, we do provide ponchos to all the graduating students. Um, if they are needed, they will be set up on tables where the students are lining up by division. Um, and if, if we are able, we provide as many ponchos to our guests, um, parents, and other students. So um, we do have a limited number. We definitely cover all the students, though, and uh, the bookstore will be selling ponchos on that day as well. OK, some other questions here. So what? time or day is the stadium parking available and that's just accessible parking in the stadium lot? A stadium lot is just accessible parking. Okay, and is there a size restriction on bags or purses being brought into the ceremonies? There is and it is actually up on the commencement website when you go under the prohibited items. I'm sorry, I can't tell you what it is off the top of my head. And then do either of you know if divisional ceremonies are also live streamed? Um, don't believe so. I don't believe that they are, but that is up to the divisions whether or not that they want to live stream. So we do have contacts for each of the divisions. And if you want to, oh, and here they are. <laughs> so depending on what division it is that your student is graduating from, if you want to contact the person and ask them that question, they will be able to let you know if whether or not they will be live streaming their particular divisional ceremony for you. How do students um, or can students get uh, or families buy a picture of their student being handed the diploma at any of the ceremonies? Oh, so that is actually through the photography company. What will happen is, is that the students will be getting an email a couple of weeks before the graduation ceremony asking them to pre-register for with the photography company to give them information about how the photography company can get in touch with them. And one of the things they do ask for is alternate emails and or phone numbers. So they can give them your information as well. So that when the photography company has all of their proofs done, they can get them to you. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe that they have the proofs done within 48 to 72 hours after the ceremonies. And so they email the students with whatever email addresses they have. So if the student has given them their Miami email address as well as, let's say, your personal email address, both of you would get an email letting you know, hey, we've got your proofs done, you can go to this website, and then you can go out and look at those proofs. And then it'll take you through a portal where you can go in and you can start ordering any um, pictures that you would like. Um, two questions related to honors and uh, honors program and honors cords. Um, so the one is if they're in the honors program, are they automatically invited to the honors ceremony or, or reception that is taking place? 
Um, yeah. And yeah. then, um, and there, uh, we, I assume there's more information on the commencement website right. about that. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the University Honors Program, you'll need to contact the University Honors Program for more information about what they are doing for their reception and how they are going to be contacting their students. Um, that is completely handled through that program and it is something that we have just the information about when it's being held, but we do not have any information about what it is or how they are contacting their students. Um, and then two, uh, one other one about honors, how do students know if they are eligible for different types of honors, cords, those types of things? So students who are eligible for Latin honors, which would be cum summa and magna laude, those students will be notified by my office um, towards the beginning of next month. And if students are not sure if they meet those requirements, if they go to the One Stop website and type in Latin honors, that will take them to a website that has the list right now of the breakdown of what they have to have GPA-wise based on their academic division. If they then meet those requirements, um, we will be looking at them and as soon as we have verified they do meet all of the requirements, they will receive an official letter as well as an email letting them know that they have met the requirements so that they know they can go and pick up their honor cords at the time of graduate, at the grad fest. Um, they will also then receive additional emails after that letting them know of other places they can pick up those honor cords if they can't make it to the grad fest because we still do have those cords available afterwards. If they are in the university honors program, they will be notified by the university honors program to let them know that they can pick up whatever um, regalia that they get through them, whether it is a set of cords, if it's a medallion, things of that sort. If they qualify for the departmental honors, so if they have honors inside of English, honors in um, Spanish, et cetera, things of that sort, the department is in charge of getting them or letting them know if they meet those honors. And if there's any type of cords or things of that sort that they would get within the departmental honors, the department will let them know and will hand those to them. This is Kathy again. I just wanted to circle back real quick about the RV parking that Mark had um, talked about. We did have RV parking available at Millette, but that was sold out the day they went live for, uh, which I believe was the first week in January. So the RV, on our website it says where RV parking is currently sold out. However, what Mark had um, um, referenced to is we do have RV parking available, available, uh, available, sorry about that, at the different lot. And um, there's, it's a rather large lot, so we've never um, had a problem with RVs of having too many in the past. Um, I know there's a question about tailgating. All I can uh, recommend is uh, just be aware that the Miami University Police Department is also located down at Dittmer Lot. So as far as tailgating, I wouldn't uh, necessarily discourage it, but be aware that the police department is located right on that site. We had a question about shuttles as well. Um, so are shuttles available from any lot on campus? And they have a re somewhat restricted, like adjusted route um, for Saturday. Um, and um, and um, they will publish the, the kind of route right. picture is published on the commencement website. Right. I'm not sure if it's there yet, but it's, if not, it will be well before we get right. to graduation weekend. So nothing to worry about at this moment. Um, and then had a question to reconfirm the graduation application for graduation deadline, which is March 1st. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, if a student is out of Oxford this summer or this semester, excuse me, how will they get grad fest information, announcements, et cetera, et cetera? Everything is sent through email, so they will still get the information through their email. But if they're not able to make it to grad fest, they can go to the Brick and Ivy campus website and they can go onto their website and find all the information about different things. So the campus website does have information about how they can order a cap, gown, tassel. They can go on there and they can ask questions about how to get um, information about getting um, announcements, just different things like that. So the campus store, the Brick and Ivy campus store, will have more information for them if they are not here 
inside of Oxford or if they're not able to go to the one-day events that are going to be held the following week at the Middletown or the Hamilton location. And the days and times for Hamilton and Middletown are also under the academic regalia um, page on the website. Um, let's see, so a couple others here. So we had um, someone ask that they purchased a gown and cap in January and got sent last year's tassel. How do they get that corrected? Talk to the Brick and Ivy store and see if they're able to just do a swap for you. Um, and uh, again, someone asked, when is Grad Fest? That's April 2nd and 3rd on the Oxford campus. And there are also Grad Fest, as um, Amber just mentioned, on each of our regional campuses. Um, someone asked, can you Uber to the stadium? You can, but you're going to be can. sitting in some traffic right. probably on your way there. Um, and so that is a, a choice you'd have to make. Um, let's see. Looking for other questions, please uh, bring them in here if you haven't sent them in yet. Um, this PowerPoint or this the um, recording of this will be available posted at the same link that you went to register um, on the Parent and Family Programs webinars page um, here within a couple days. Um, so you'll be able to go back and rewatch all of this um, and not have to write down all of this information here on your screen at the moment. Um, one other thing I would like to mention real quick since we are listed on here on the questions later page. So for our students who are graduating through the College of Liberal Arts and Applied Science, you have all been at the regional campuses over the last couple of years. So you may have had friends who have graduated in the past or maybe you've had another um, family member who has graduated through them in the past. And so you've gone to the Hamilton campus or the Middletown campus. We want to let you know that starting this year, they are now holding their divisional ceremonies here in Oxford at the Goggin Ice Center. It will be at 3 p.m. on Sunday. So that is a fairly big change from what they have done in the past. Um, they do have that on their divisional website. If you have further questions about that, please don't hesitate to get in touch with their liaison, Debbie Boston. She will be happy to answer any questions you may have, but I did want to bring that up since that is a fairly big change from what people may have been expecting, especially since up until we did learn of this change, we had been putting under the future um, commencement information that they were going to be at one of the regional campuses. So I wanted to make sure that was there. Uh, so a couple more questions here. Um, one is an experience kind of question, maybe Kathy, that you can answer. Um, do you think folks have time to make it from the Jaeger ceremony and pictures afterwards and all of that to the 4 p.m. buffet at Markham well before it is out at mm. 6 p.m.? I think that is going to be tough at, well, is it 1.30? I think you could you could probably make it. It, it should if everything. And is, I don't and I don't believe you have to be seated at four o'clock. Right. Like I, you have time. You don't have to arrive at right. four o'clock. And so. I'm sure that they've timed that um, specifically, knowing that that's about the time that the guests will be arriving. So right. I think you should be in good shape. Um, two other questions: Will students receive email notification um, that everything is in order with their application for graduation? No, we do not send emails when we have received their graduation application. Once they have completed the application, there is a notification at the end of that application that tells them that their application has been processed and will be applied to their degree audit within the next one to two business days. They can always go to their degree audit and verify that it has been processed. The only time we do notify a student is when there is an issue, such as they have applied for something that is a pre-major or is an undeclared record, things of that sort. Um, so we always encourage students to go and look at their degree audit because the very first thing that's on the degree audit that should always be checked off is the graduation application. If it is showing as a no, that means that their application for graduation has not been processed. All right, so I had one other question about transportation. Um, and I don't know the answer, and I'm trying to furiously look at the commencement website, but I will throw it out to our two folks in the room. Are the, the buses that run from um, the off-campus kind of surrounding areas in Oxford, um, viable off options during the weekend? Yes. So through the Butler County Regional Transportation Authorities, um, the way that they have done the map in the past, they have kind of gone off-campus on one of the routes. 
if they do that again this year, then if you're over towards the, oh, I'm trying to think of, if you're over towards Chestnut, mm, towards Chestnut, but also towards uh, the culinary school. Um, over by Kroger. Yeah, over by mm -hmm. the Kroger area. They have had stops in that direction in the past. Um, the other bus route has pretty much stayed inside of the Miami area and right. only gone to the, the various um, parking lots. But once again, until they have actually put that down in writing, I can't 100% say that they're going to do something like that again and go kind of off script and do some outlying areas. All right, those are all the questions that we have. And if you have more questions, I think the general answer that can answer the most of them, um, including where you sign up for housing, those Markham buffets, those types of things, um, and find out about all kinds of other pieces of information is the commencement website. It is your best friend. So spend a lot of time on there if you've got a question, kind of digging around a little bit, and you will most likely find um, that answer or that link. I also want to point out, this is Kathy Squantz again, that that is my phone number listed there, 529-3612. Uh, if you have any questions about it, really anything, um, you can always start with me and I can find out the answers for you. And every one of our divisionals have their divisional website up and running except for the College of Creative Arts. They should be up soon, but if you are in any of the other divisionals and you want to look to see what they have for their website, if you just go under the divisional contact area, you should be able to find that information and you can go in and just click and it'll take you directly to their website. We had one more person asking um, where they can find a, uh, where they can find your information, Kathy. It's on your screen right now in the top left corner for under university commencement is the answer for that one. Um, where it says president's office, that's my, my direct line. Um, and then where can we obtain announcements to send? They can do that through the campus store, through Brick and Ivy, mm -hmm. um, at GradFest, et cetera. Um, and one other question, my son has a co-major. Would he go to two divisional ceremonies? No, he would not. Uh, you would just go to the ceremony that your degree is housed in. And all of the divisional ceremonies is based on the degree, not the majors. All right, and thank you so much. Um, and best of luck with your planning. Thank you.